friends Jeff Hopper and Jeff Cranford are back in front of our we are fingerprint here talking again about who am I and mm. this, these conversations that we've had that have been really really helpful in terms of identifying what scripture says about who we are in yes. our identity and I want to talk today a little bit about uh, the idea of being a citizen of heaven mm. so let's talk first about what it means to be the member of a particular golf club different clubs have these different uh, requirements yes. uh, there's always the fact that you're going to pay dues but there are other requirements as well if you want to be the member of a club what are some of the strictest requirements you've heard of well and then there's all kinds of rules and regulations well, a lot of the too. requirements you've some have you know you got a food and beverage minimum you got to pay every month uh, others you know no cell phone policy dress code you got to have you know clothes that go down past a certain point etc cetera, etc cetera. And then there's kind of a new wave, especially because we're in California, yeah. which is let's go casual and let's do away with the collared shirt stuff. And then you've got this battle between traditionalists and this kind of new wave. How are we going to get new millennials back into the game? Is the, you know, so there are a lot of these requirements, uh, both uh, legal and then dues wise and everything. They really segment you out and make you part of a, a group. I mean, they just do. They right. make you part of a group. They define you. Well, and there are some clubs that. You can't just show up and say, I'd like to be part of your club. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the way that the the uh, the difficulty in, in making clubs go lately, the economics of clubs have allowed for more of that. But there are still some really exclusive clubs where if, if you're not invited, you have no chance. Yeah, last time I uh, applied for application for membership at Augusta, uh, <laughs> they never got my application. They didn't so. get your application well. <laughs> I probably didn't tell you that I tore that up for your oh, sake you? okay, before it actually went out in the mail. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what it takes to be a citizen of heaven. Are there strict requirements? Uh, but this, the Bible talks about our being citizens of heaven. Yeah. How does that happen? Well, Paul's letter to the Philippians, he said, you know, our citizenship is now in heaven. Uh, so last time we talked a little bit about the familial aspect and we're brought into the family of God these last. Right. So we've already talked about that in the series. And now it uses a different analog rather than family. It switches to citizenship. And what that denotes to me is family, you're born in, you're you know, even if they're a little bit misfit, uh, you know, you're, you still, well, they're part of the family. Citizenship comes with it a little bit uh, of an air of responsibility. As mm -hmm. a citizen, I have certain requirements. It may be jury duty, it may be this, it may do that. It was interesting, uh, yesterday you and I met, we hadn't seen each other in a while, we decided to meet at a Starbucks, and there was a <laughs> citizen's event out of nowhere, where, and there were uh, local sheriffs, uh, police, firemen, I got an impression there were some fire folks there, and they all packed into this place to just mingle with the people, you know, it was this, and it, I felt, to be honest, like a good citizen. I went over there, thanked them for their service. I got kind of a different vibe. I feel like, you know, there was some obligation as a citizen to support local law enforcement Which and others. Which is very interesting because I didn't get that vibe, and that's because I don't live here. Because you don't live here. Somebody, lady gave me something, gave it to Jeff, and Jeff goes, oh, I don't live here. You can take that back. And I think that's probably true in the heavenly realm. Some people say, well, I don't live here. You know, uh, I'm not part of this citizenship. And so I think there's an incumbent responsibility when we do think of citizenship. I think of being a good citizen, and I right. want to uphold my end of the communal bargain, if you will, whether it's stated or not. I find, too, Jeff, that people take up that mantle of responsibility the greater level of pride that they have in their community. Yeah. And so I think that that is certainly a spark for us in our faith. If I am proud, if I have spent time worshiping God, and I have therefore become increasingly proud of who God is, I'm like, there is no responsibility that's too great. Yeah. I want to do my part as a citizen of heaven. Yeah, and pride doesn't work very often in the kingdom realm, but pride of who God is yes. is is a is okay. It is okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna actually preach on that. I think this weekend. Uh, we're going to be talking about Psalm 96, and as our incumbent responsibility is just not so much even our salvation, but just to say this is God, the glory of God, our creator. Everything flows from that connection. It, it really does, does flow from that connection. Really and so then we, we walk the streets proudly saying this is part of where I am and where I live. 
I grew I live in a place where my family has been now for mm. more than a hundred and well almost a hundred and thirty years. Wow. And so there's this sense of civic understanding and civic pride for me. Even when I see things in my what is, you know, a rather large city now that are not so good, I still say this is my city. Mm. This is the mm. place I I want to be. Do you have that same passion about your citizenship in heaven? I mean, I I, I, I know question. this is a this is a a cherished and trusted obligation I have to the Lynx family. I mean, what would happen if I if I don't see myself as a citizen of this community? I don't see uh, any of my stewardship, and I say we're to have an affair. It would have a profound impact, and the downline of that in our community, and so that. That awareness, again, another analog, born again, family, identity, and now identity as citizen, just gives us another layer of understanding of how significant our contribution, or lack thereof, is. Wow. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, buddy. Yep, and thank you all. We'll see you soon.